These right here are American cowboys, one of the most iconic symbols of the American West. However, these ranchers, as well as cattlemen across the entire nation, well, they're facing what can only be described as an existential challenge from globalist entities that seek to consolidate as well as to control the production of food. And in that consolidation process, they are making it quite literally impossible for American ranchers to survive. Now, to be more specific, the production of beef has, over the last several years now, and unbeknownst to most people, come to be controlled by a monopoly of only four companies, three of which are controlled by foreign entities, including one that is based out of China. And so, in order to break down how this came to be, as well as how the situation is not only destroying our domestic beef industry, but also can lead to actual food shortages, well, I sat down with Dr. Brooke Miller, who is the president of the U.S. Cattlemen's Association, which is the organization that represents the interests of American cattle ranchers against the interests of globalists. And he explained to me how these giant conglomerates came to monopolize the industry and drive out American cattle ranchers by the thousands. Take a listen. Cattle ranchers are going out of business and going broke all the time. And uh, we've been losing thousands and thousands of cattle ranchers over the last several decades. And it's all based on the fact that we have four multinational corporations that dominate uh, the, pro the food protein industry. They uh, have anti-competitive practices and uh, they basically steal a lot of money out of rural America. When, when uh, live cattle prices are high, rural America reinvests and uh, it, it, it's very profitable. Um, but for so many years, um, it's been unprofitable. We'll have a couple years that are profitable. Um, and people always, you know, the cattle ranchers are, are some of the best uh, businessmen in the world as far as being able to manage. They may not be the best businessmen by being in that, in that uh, avocation, but uh, they're some of the smartest uh, people that I know. And uh, they can somehow squeeze out a, squeeze out a living when uh, a lot of people couldn't. So when you say four companies control this industry, can you break that down a little bit further? Let's say, let's say I want to start my own ranch. So I buy, I buy up land, I, I buy a couple of animals, I, I you know, b begin the process of raising them, feeding them, et cetera. At what point do I have to interact with one of these four companies? Well, you may never have to interact with one of these four companies, but you'll feel the effects of these four companies. Most cattle producers across this, this, this country have a cow herd and they raise calves as their commodity and they sell those calves, they can sell those calves anywhere from seven to eight months or they can own them all the way through the feedlot. Uh, when they go from the cattle rancher's ranch, they're sold to different buyers uh, who then grow those cattle and try to put on economic gains uh, with low cost uh, foods. And then eventually they'll go into a feedlot where they'll be fattened um, and slaughtered. And those are the cattle where the market breaks down is at the feedlot, uh, between the feedlot and the packer. The packer then purchases those cattle from feedlots, slaughters them, and then sells them to uh, wholesalers and, and, and retailers. And they have such a monopoly, there is really no free market in the live fat cattle marketplace. So when you say the four companies have a monopoly, is it a monopoly on, on the slaughtering, the feedlots, um, which part of the when they're equation? when they're purchasing cattle from from people that fatten the cattle on the feedlots, they have a monopoly and they basically there's no there's no price discovery, true price discovery. They basically set the price and tell them this is what you're going to get. So prior to the interview, we were chatting a little bit, and you said out of these four companies, only one of them is an American company, right? So that, can you sort of break that down for the audience? Can you break down what these four companies are, who owns them ultimately, and how, how did it come to be that these four companies, 75% of which are not American companies, came to preside over the entire industry here in the U.S.? Well, there are four companies that, that control the protein in the world. Uh, you have the, the American company Cargill. Um, you have Tyson Foods, which is a multinational owned, uh, I think, invested, highly invested by the Chinese. And then you have two Brazilian companies, Manfred and JBS. And JBS is the largest uh, meatpacking company in the world. And uh, they are run actually by um, the Batista family. And the two uh, heads of that company spent time in jail in, uh, in Brazil because of uh, bribery charges. And they basically have through mergers and acquisitions have become the largest and, and our government has allowed those mergers and acquisitions to occur because they think bigger, they thought bigger was better and more efficient and I think 
the COVID-19 crisis and the, 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 the uh, food chain or the supply chain issues we had with that show that it's, it's not the most efficient way to do it. We need a more regional, uh, diverse uh, food uh, system. There was a similar sort of setup with um, the baby formula market, right, where there was like one, there's just a, a handful of plants. One plant was shut down by the FDA tem temporarily, but apparently they didn't have the foresight to see, hey, if we shut down this plant, which provided some, some, uh, some outrageously large percentage of the baby formula in the country, there's going to be a baby formula shortage. So like what you said with, with COVID, it, did it reveal any, any of these type of problems where if, let's say, one of these companies or, or just a few small plants were to shut down, how would it affect the beef, beef market here in America? Well, we, we saw that with COVID-19 when, when the pandemic initially happened. Um, we saw shortages of meat in the beef counter, in the meat counter. We saw prices go really high. Um, and we saw a dramatic drop in what farmers and ranchers or feedlots were getting for their um, getting for their fat cattle. And that, that just trickled on down to the producers. Everybody saw depression, depression of their prices. Um, what happened was we had a couple plants where there was COVID outbreaks and they shut, shut those plants down and it completely disrupted the supply chain. And uh, the monopoly, however, thrived because their profits went through the roof. They could pretty much charge what they wanted uh, to the retailers and the, and the wholesalers and they could pretty much pay what they wanted to uh, fat cattle market and the live cattle market. All right, just to pause here for a super quick moment, I wanted to mention that the sponsor of today's episode is a super cool company called Secure. And they're a cool company for people that actually care about their privacy. Because listen, if you don't think that these giant tech conglomerates and all these different alphabet agencies within the US government are spying on your messages, well, then frankly, you are not paying enough attention to the news. However, all that can be in the past because with Secure, they have awesome proprietary technology that has all your messages and all your emails actually go through Switzerland as they're making their way back and forth between you and your recipient. And so let's say you're here in America and the person you're messaging is over in Canada, Mexico, or anywhere else in the world. Well, it doesn't matter because all your messages are actually going through Switzerland back and forth through from one to another, meaning that they're not subject to the Cloud Act and they are only subject to Swiss laws, which are some of the safest in the entire world. Their technology is awesome, it's proprietary, and they're a company that actually cares about your freedom. They care about getting the facts out, which is why they sponsor a company like ours. And best of all, they are offering a 25% off deal for our viewers, for the viewers of Facts Matter. So head on over to secure.com and use promo code ROMAN to get 25% off. And the rates are not even that expensive to start with. It's only $5 for the messenger and $10 for the email and messenger combo. And they even offer a seven day free trial. So again, head on over to secure.com, use promo code ROMAN, save some money and support an awesome sponsor. Well, let me ask you this, a lot of the people across America, I'm sure many people who watch this program, go to their supermarket store shelves week after week, and they notice that the price of meat is just going up and up and up and up, uh, every week, pretty much. Is that due to inflation? Inflationary forces like the price of fuel, um, the, the just mo money losing its value, and the, the price of every step of that process going up, or is it, or, and or is it the fact that this monopoly has price control and therefore they see this inflationary environment and they say, hey, we can pad our profit margins by increasing the price because, well, consumers have to accept a higher price right now because it's an inflationary market. Well, what, what do you see happening? I would say both, but largely the, uh, largely the monopoly. You know, um, I mean, our fuel prices have doubled, our input prices have doubled, but that doesn't mean we're going to get more for our meat. Now, right now, there's such a shortage uh, the, 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 quote, cow herd that produces the cattle is lower than it's been in 30, 40 years. But that's because the monopolies have forced a lot of cattle ranchers out of the market. And they've done this uh, in many ways, but they import, they import um, beef from foreign countries and label it as U.S. beef. Can you how, believe how that? How are they able to do that? Because our government allows them. As long as they're slaughtered here in the U.S.? That, is Doesn't that... even matter. I'll give you a little history lesson. Uh, back in uh, the early 2010, 2011, we had a bill that, maybe it was 2009, a bill that passed in the Farm Bill called Country of Origin Labeling. Mm -hmm. And that was a law that said any beef that's sold in the United States must be clearly labeled as to where it was born, raised, and processed. The Canadian government and the Mexican government sued the United States and the World Trade Organization saying that that was uh, against the um, North American Free Trade Agreement, and it was presided over by a Mexican judge. Uh, eventually, that went back and forth for many, many years. 
Um, eventually, uh, after it was appealed and everything, it was it was decided that it was illegal for the United States to require food to be labeled as to where it was originated. So they repealed it. Congress folded and the Obama administration folded and just under pressure because they were going to award retaliatory tariffs to Canada and Mexico. And so they repealed country of origin labeling in June of 2015. Immediately within one week we saw a 40 percent drop in live cattle, mic, uh, cattle prices. And so what's happening now is it reverted to an old rule that said basically the meat at the meat counter can be labeled product of the USA if it is significantly transformed within our borders. Significant transformation by uh, what the USDA calls a significant transformation is simply repackaging or slicing the meat. Doesn't have to be born here, doesn't have to be raised here, doesn't have to be slaughtered here. Uh, it can just be repackaged and relabeled. I feel like that's uh, that's a secret. That's only what well, you just revealed a secret to the audience that no, almost nobody knows about. Well, it's 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 not a secret in the cattle industry, but it is a secret to a large part of America. And believe me, I've been screaming from the loudest loudest rooftop trying to uh, get people to recognize this fact. And um, you know, it's it's hurting America. It it really is because if we run all of our cattle ranchers out of uh, business, then we're going to see huge uh, rises in our food prices and we're going to be dependent upon these four multinational corporations for our food and foreign countries for our food. You're paying a higher price at the supermarket for a steak. You, you at least assume that, okay, an American company is, is making a, a, taking that money, making a bit of profit, then it's going to the ranchers making a bit of profit, but that might not be the case. It's, it might be a Brazilian company taking that pro those profits back to Brazil and it might be a, a Mexican cattle rancher who's taking those profits, essentially cutting America out of the picture altogether. Yeah, and it's, it's really harming rural America because rural America is so dependent upon agriculture. And when agricultural prices are depressed, all of rural America suffers. And when rural America suffers, uh, I mean, we have a opioid crisis in rural America. Um, it's tough. That's shocking. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate because I'm a physician. Mm. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't raise a family on what I make as a cattle rancher. Not even close. In the past, where you, would you have been able to? Not any time in the recent past. Not any time in the recent past. Well, so you're the president of the U.S. Cattlemen's Association. Yes. Is there any hope? Is there any possible solution, and actually a potentially implementable solution that, that you, you could recommend? Let's say if you're in charge of some industry in the government, the AG industry or the AG department, yeah. could you actually do anything about this? Well, I think the Department of Justice uh, needs to do a, a, a really good job in investigating these, these packers because they're obviously uh, practicing anti-competitive practices. And, you know, I, th I personally feel like uh, they need to do what they did to Standard Oil in 1921, and that's break them up. Uh, as long as we have four major corporations that control our protein market and our food market, they will always find a way around the law. Right now, we have a very important piece of legislation that's not an end-all, be-all, but it is something that will help. It's called the uh, Cattle Price Discovery and Transparency Act of 2022. It's, uh, it's a bipartisan bill. Um, Deb Fisher from Nebraska and Charles Grassley from Iowa are the main people that started it. And there were other people, uh, John Tester from Mon Montana, is on there. A lot of people that are on it, but there's it's receiving tremendous pushback from uh, big business and all their lobby. And uh, it's 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 passed uh, the Senate Ag Committee, I think, but. We need to get it to the Senate Ag floor, and we also need to get it to the uh, U.S. House of Representatives floor and pass this very important legislation. Um, it's not an end-all, be-all, but it, it, it will help stop uh, the bleeding for a little while right now. What's happening is there's, a, uh, there's been a, a reduction in competitive cash market over the last several decades, and it's gotten to critical points. And what we're trying to do is set a mandatory minimum that each one of these packers must um, ne ne must participate in a live cash market at a certain percentage each week for each plant. So y you you sort of laid out a proposal of what uh, Senator Grassley uh, put it, put into uh, potential legislation uh, in the Senate. If that 
is not, let's say, passed, or if it's not passed soon, what do you foresee happening in, in, this, in this industry here in America? I see a complete total integration uh, from, uh, in uh, our food chain, and it's going to be completely dominated by, even more so, by the four uh, major corporations. And um, I see, I don't see, I see ranching, more and more ranchers going out of business. And I see, um, I see a food shortage and a food crisis. I will like to add one thing. Now, that was not the full interview. If you'd like to watch this interview in its glorious entirety, you can do so over on Epic TV, our awesome no censorship video platform. The link will be right there at the very top of the description box. And I'd like to mention that besides the entirety of this interview, well, over on Epic TV, every single week, I publish somewhere between two to three exclusive episodes of Facts Matter that, quite frankly, due to the regime of censorship here on YouTube, we cannot publish on this platform. And so, if you'd like to head on over to Epic TV, check out the entirety of this interview, as well as all that other great exclusive content, well, again, the link will be right there at the very top of the description box. I hope you check it out. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed, and most importantly, stay free.